Hey guys, I've got another review, uh, product review today. Uh, this is going to be a Bouge RV. I think that's how you pronounce it. B-O-U-G-E-R-V solar panel. Now this one is a flexible solar panel, as you guys can see. But this one is actually a little bit unique. Most solar panels are silicon um, is the main component used in here. But this solar panel uses a different technology used that they refer to the acronym of SIGS, C-I-G-S. It's a, uh, I'm not going to try to <laughs> repeat it, but it's like a copper, iridium, selenium uh, material. So, uh, but what it does is it's supposed to, these are supposed to be longer lasting, which is one of the complaints many people had with flexible solar panels. And most notably is, well, as you guys can see, it is very flexible. This particular panel right here is 100 watts and uh, it is 78 inches long. Um, I do have some comments on the length of it, but I'll talk about that in a minute. We're going to go ahead and do some tests, hook it up to the meter. I've got a nice sunny day out here. Um, and uh, just kind of see where it'll go. Action. Okay, guys, we're going to measure uh, just the raw output of this without it being flexed. So um, I'm going to take the voltage, tell you what, see how it's coming in, and then I will swip it, switch it over to amps, and then uh, my boy Zane here is going to help me and we will angle it to the sun and see what we can get as the max out uh, amp output on this and therefore the max overall rating and then we'll roll into its uh, bendable performance so right now our open circuit voltage is 29.25 okay so we'll need that when we multiply it for the main output let me swap this over to the amps here pulling about three amps yeah so we're actually at 90 watts uh, right now or close to 90 watts sitting where it is now we do have great sun uh, and we are facing at a southern exposure but we're going to tilt her up here slowly because we know that solar panels are more efficient at an angle we're uh, we're at 3.2 go down slowly okay we want to try to bend it down go down slowly 3.3 three okay so we're the best i could get right there was uh 3.3 amps so zane we're gonna turn this a little bit and try to angle it even more toward the sun since we got the sun over there a little bit and we want to try to keep this thing as flat as possible okay so we we dropped it down flat the sun as you guys can see is a little bit that direction we're at 3.4 amps all right zane Grab it, now slowly lift up. Let's see if we can get a little bit more. Uh, 3.7, 3.6. So I'm reliably, about the best I can get is about 3.6 amps. Okay guys, so that was a, a, little, <laughs> a little bit of a hassle there. We had to tilt it a little bit. But the absolute max output that I could find uh, angling it to the sun under what I would argue is relatively ideal circumstances and sequentially tilting the panel as a whole as though it was a fixed one was 105 watts, which is pretty good. It's a 100 watt panel. Um, uh, if For those who have worked around the, uh, the rigid panels, it's pretty rare that you actually get the full output that is labeled on there. So this getting 105 watts is pretty good. What I think is even better though is it was getting around 90 watts uh, sitting relatively flat, which is uh, a good sign in terms of its overall ability to collect light and produce wattage. So we're going to take it and we're going to put it on top of 6.0. Um, it will be slightly flexed up there. And uh, that's my big concern is that a portion of it, you know, if, if it's flexed in a certain way, it may hinder the efficiency quite a bit. But let's put it up there and see how it turns out. Okay, guys, so we put this up here on the roof of the camper. Like I said, it's 78 inches long. And uh, I'll give you guys a width here in a minute. I don't have it as I stand, but it looks like it's probably about 12 inches wide. Um, I will have some potential commentary. I do think they make some that are wider and not as long, but this particular one is very long. Uh, as you guys can see, I put it on here and it extends way over the front. It's obviously not something I'm going to be able to specifically use here. But let's go ahead and measure, because what I'm curious about is with, with changes in its angle, 
throughout how that's going to affect the power output. So this camper right now is sitting relatively flat, uh, but it is aimed to the south. So sp other than the angle, it should specifically be getting pretty ideal sun. So I'll get right back to you. Let's see where we're at. All right, guys. So right now we are getting right around 2.8, 2.9 amps. Uh, in the configuration on the roof of the camper, and that includes a portion of it that's flat and actually slightly angled to the north, and a portion of it that wraps around uh, and uh, points to the south. Um, I'm actually quite impressed by that. Um, that's going to put us right around at the 25.2, or uh, that's going to put us right around at the 29.25 uh, volts. Uh, at actually I just had three amps it's not staying there consistently so I mean this is putting us pretty close to hundred watts you know about 80 to 90 watts of output at some unusual angles here under ideal sun conditions though that's actually quite impressive so um, let's do some other more extreme tests see how it does all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and uh, try a, a little bit more radical uh, 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 bends in this and so forth and just kind of see how that affects uh, voltage. So we'll just do this. I, I don't expect this to be very efficient. We just have it relatively perpendicular to the sun and it's obviously twisted in a coil. And let's see what, uh, let's see what we got going on here. And uh, that's actually quite amazing. Uh, 2.9 amps. Uh, let me switch over to the voltage real quick and just make sure that that is staying as high as I think it should here. Yeah, uh, 28 volts. So, I mean, I don't really have an explanation for it, guys. That's a pretty amazing that it's getting that much uh, power. Let's, uh, let's move this around and just see how... Uh... Right, so we've got 2.4... 2.64. So the interesting dynamic on this is a lot more solar panels are a lot more sensitive in the sense that you can uh, different angles and stuff have quite dramatic effects. The real odd thing on this is it is it is it doesn't seem to be quite that sensitive, um, which which in turn. Uh, yeah, because we're at 2.8 amps, so we, you know, we've seen that we've radically moved this panel around. Okay, now we're, we went to just 3 amps. So we've moved this panel around pretty radically, and uh, we're producing very similar power, which is unusual. It's good, because if you can imagine situations where this is on top of a roof or something, and it's bent quite a bit, yeah, we're back down to 2. Point, actually 2.9, 2.8. 2.6 amps um, and I mean some of this is not even facing the Sun it's actually very very interesting um, how well this does let's let's lay it like this and just see how this does uh, 2.9 amps right there so anyways in short though uh, a criticism I initially had with this length is the fact that you might have portions of it that are at radically different angles and other portions that could affect the efficiency but that just doesn't seem to be the case here, which is not the norm with panel. So I'm really, I'm really quite, uh, I'm really quite impressed by this panel and its performance in different flexible ways. Um, all right, guys. Hey, just some final thoughts. This this solar panel um, actually really, really impressed me. Um, I, just as a clarification, the width of it is 14 inches. Total length is 78. Um, now I've used so, uh, flexible solar panels in a couple of my builds. I used it on my very first camper, which was about three years ago. I used it on uh, 5.0, and now I'm going to use some flexible solar panels in 6.0. Um, traditionally, uh, flexible solar panels uh, were not known to have a long uh, to be to last a long time. I did choose to use them though because they're significantly less weight. I mean, so you know the flexible. Uh, sense of them allows a little bit more versatility and they're very very low profile uh, my very first camper I was not super impressed with that flexible panel though it, it actually failed um, after I think it was about nine months to a year as I recall 
Uh, the flexible panels that I used on 5.0, so you know, nearly three years of technological development, have worked out very well. They're still running strong. And the one thing I noticed about them, in addition to being flexible, lightweight, they always typically overproduced what uh, your traditional rigid panels would do for the same rating. My assumption on that was that um, they know that a lot of people would mount the panels flat to the roof and they would get real hot. Of course, when solar panels get hot, they lose efficiency. So I'm guessing the manufacturers kind of overwatered them just to make sure that uh, they didn't have some dissatisfied customers, but works out well for me. Uh, this particular panel, which seems to be using some new and innovative technology, which I like, which is specifically the material they use, seems to have exceptional performance. Now, of course, I can't claim this, the accuracy of this statement, but Bouge RV does claim that this uh, new material they use uh, will make the, plan the panels last longer. So uh, I think time will be to said, but in terms of their actual output and their raw flexibility, I mean, that's quite incredible. Um, this is a pretty good panel. Now, with all that being said, and it's not necessarily a con, but it's something to be known, you're going to pay for it. These panels are a little bit more. Um, I, the price usually runs for about $270 to $280 US dollars. Uh, I saw on Amazon as of the date of this video, which is early November of 2022, uh, they did have a $30, uh, $30 off coupon. So I'll throw a link uh, in there to where you can get this panel. Uh, it is expensive for a 100 watt panel. That's, um, I mean, it may be close to twice as much as you can get for some lesser panels. However, um, the production and the excellent flexibility this offers uh, for some people in some applications might make this a great opportunity. I'm hoping to see them continue to develop it. Uh, I hope the price maybe lowers a little bit. And uh, this may be a go-to panel. Like I said, this one is very unusual. It's narrow and very long. Um, but they do make some that are uh, slightly different shaped. Um, now that I think about it, the actual surface area that this takes up, that being only a 100 watt panel, is probably greater than other uh, 100 watt panels. Uh, let me show you a comparison. So just as a comparison, this is, sorry guys, this is one of the flexible panels that I'm going to put on 6.0 here shortly. Um, this is a Renogy panel, um, and I tested this one, and uh, it also uh, overproduced slightly, so to my expectations. Now this is not a bad thing, but I'm just kind of comparing and contrasting different panels that are described as being flexible. And I know, yes, I know it's dirty. Uh, but this one, obviously, uh, uh, it's flexible enough for my application, but it obviously is nowhere near as flexible as this panel would be. And that's really something to consider depending on your exact application. Um, and now that I'm looking at it, I'm, I, I didn't measure it out, but my guess would be that the surface area, so this is also a 100 watt panel. Uh, even though this one is wider, it's substantially less long. Let's actually measure this. I'm kind of curious on surface area here. Okay, so let's, let's look at kind of surface area here. So the Renogy panel is 43 inches long by 23 inches wide. Now some of that is non-panel surface because uh, you obviously got the grommets here. So let's just say 22 inches. Let's just kind of cut it down so or I'm sorry let's say 20 let's say 20 by 40 inches of actual panel surface and let's see how this one works out so we know it's 78 by the actual panel surface on this one is let's give it 12 uh, it is a little wider but I don't think this these edges are functioning as panel so let's say 78 by 12 okay. All right, guys, I just measured the square inches on these. Uh, for this 100-watt panel, it's 800 square inches, and for this flex, for the Rouge RV one, it's 936. Um, so 
The point is, is that this one has a larger surface area, but produces the same amount of energy as this one does. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just for you guys to note. Um, I guess my point is, is the specific application of this would be best served in one where you absolutely needed the most flexibility because uh, another very conventional panel, flexible panel like this, doesn't he have near the flexibility that this would. Now, uh, Bouge RV claims that this new material they use, the SIGS material, which is, as opposed to silicone, um, lasts longer. Uh, like I said, I, I, don't, I can't speak to that. I'm going to take their word on it. Uh, but the bottom line is this. I think this is a really nice panel. It, it produces really well. It has incredibly um, good production of electricity at different angles than you would expect for a solar panel. Um, and uh, I think it's a good panel overall. And if you had a, an application where you really needed to have some, some big bins, uh, this would be really the one. One final note, which I thought was kind of an interesting thing they added here, is they, uh, they already included the double-sided uh, tape on the back. Um, so you could peel it off and stick it on an object. And I think that was a really nice touch. Um, like I just, this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with this panel, but something I've done in 5.0 and I've done it 6.0 is I've actually raised the panel a little bit off the roof to try to avoid, to allow some air ventilation and try to avoid some of that heat buildup. Um, if, does that benefit me in the long run? I don't really know, but I suspect it does. If you were to use this nonstick and stick this right to a surface, you would, of course, largely eliminate that. So just food for thought, uh, but I do think it's a really, really nice touch that they included it. Guys, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, etc., etc., and we'll go from there. Thank you.